hello you guys so this is going to be like a part two of our video for today um if you guys checked out part one um you kind of already recap and we read a lot um in part one so we're just basically going to continue guys we're on page um 39 um and i'm going to reread isaiah 54 verse 10 i am uploading these videos today instead of tomorrow because i'm going to be busy tomorrow and I really won't have time to like upload and edit, but I still want you guys to get the videos, okay? So, preferably you guys are encouraged through this devotional. So, guys, we're on um, Jesus is your friend, and I'm going to reread Isaiah 54, 10. It says, the mountains may disappear and the hills may come to an end, but my love will never disappear. My promise of peace will not come to an end, says the Lord who shows mercy to you, Isaiah 54, 10. And um, I did leave some stuff in the description box of the first video as well. So that's mostly where I posted that at. Okay, Revelations 3.20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with you and you will eat with me. Revelation 3.20. James 4.8. Come near to God and God will come near to you. You sinners, clean sin out of your lives. You who are trying to follow God in the world at the same time, make your thinking pure. That's James 4, 8. Psalms 27, verse 10. If my father and mother leave me, the Lord will take me in. John 15, verses 12 through 14. This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. That's John 15, 12 through 14. Again, I'm going to encourage you guys to read them in full context. If you've never read them in full context, to get a deeper understanding if you need to. Or you can just check out our videos, um, you know, of us recording it in Bible studies and reading it in full context. But because it's just a devotional book, I'm just going to read it as it is. Okay, you guys? So that's John 15, 12 through 14. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. Hopefully the AC is not up too loud, guys. First Corinthians 1 9 God who has called you to share everything with his son Jesus Christ our Lord is faithful this next scripture we announce to you what we have seen and heard because we want you also to have fellowship with us our fellowship is with God the Father and with his son Jesus Christ that's first John 1 3 and John 14 18 says I will not leave you all alone like orphans I will come back to you Amen, you guys. So just a brief recap with the Jesus is your friend. Um, you guys can pause the videos if you need to to take notes or scriptures. I'm just going to keep reading. But Jesus is your friend. The scriptures with Psalms 119.63. Proverbs 18.24. This is going between that, that video and this one. Hebrews 13.5. John 15.15-16. through 16. First John 1 John 1.7. Isaiah 54.10. Revelation 3.20, James 4.8, Psalms 27.10, John 15.12-14, 1 Corinthians 1.9, 1 John 1.3, and John 14, verse 18. And now, guys, we're going to get into Jesus is your brother. This is going to be pages 41 through 42. This is from Matthew 12.50. It says, my true brother and sister and mother are those who do what my father in heaven wants. Matthew 12, 50. Hebrews 2, 11. Jesus who makes people holy and those who are made holy are from the same family. So he is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Hebrews 2, 11. Romans 8, 29. It says, God knew them before he made the world and he decided that they would be like his son so that Jesus would be the firstborn of many brothers. That's Romans 8, 29. Galatians 3, 26 through 27 says, You were all baptized into Christ, and so you were all clothed with Christ. This means that you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. That's Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 27. John 1, 12 says, But to all who did accept him and believe in him, he gave the right to become children of God. Ephesians 2.19 <clears throat> Excuse me. Ephesians 2.19 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 Ephesians 2.
excuse me guys those churro mix <laughs> so now you who are not jewish are not foreigners or strangers any longer but are citizens together with god's holy people you belong to god's family ephesians 2 19 excuse me guys i just finished the churro mix <clears throat> so let me get some more water I want to read that again, Ephesians 2, 19. Now you who are not Jewish are not foreigners or strangers any longer, but are citizens together with God's holy people. You belong to God's family. That's Ephesians 2, 19. 1 John 3, 1 says, The Father has loved us so much that we are called children of God, and we really are his children. The reason the people in the world do not know us is that they have not known him. That's 1 John 3, 1. Galatians 4, 6 through 7 is the next one. And then, you guys, you'll notice throughout this book because it's like 300-something pages with it. Um, They're going to repeat some of them, you know, because some of them correlate into other topics. But, you know, so um, Galatians 4, 6 through 7. Since you are God's children, God sent the Spirit of His Son into your hearts. And the Spirit cries out, Father... So now you are not a slave, you are God's child, and God will give you the blessing he promised because you are his child. That's Galatians 4, 6 through 7. Romans 8, 14 says the true children of God are those who let God's spirit lead them. 1 John 3, 2 says, dear friends, now we are children of God and we have not yet been shown what we will be in the future. But we know that when Christ comes again, we will be like him because we will see him as he really is. That's 1 John 3, 2. So now, guys, we're going to move into Jesus is your protector. And this is pages 43 through 45. Jesus is your protector. Isaiah 43, verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross rivers, you will not drown. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned nor will the flames hurt you. That's Isaiah 43, 2. And we're going to keep reading, but we've been on the prayer line pretty much this whole week, guys, um, and praying and everything. And, you know, we were talking about that in one of the Bible studies, how, and also on one of the prayers, and I've been telling you guys that over the years on the YouTube channel as well with the videos, how, you know, with these scriptures, we're reading them for encouragement. You know, we can apply them to different areas of our lives and situations. But you can also turn the word of God into prayer. You can turn these scriptures into prayer. You can pray Isaiah 43 too. You can say, though I pass through the waters, God will be with me. When I cross rivers, I decree that I will not drown. When I walk through fire, I will not be burned, nor will the flames hurt me, according to the word of God in Isaiah 43 verse 2. Like that. You can also pray Romans 8, 14, or any scriptures. If you guys look on the channel, you see a lot of our prayers and things. It's, it's rooted back to the word of God. And usually when I do a video, like a Bible study or a word from God, I'm giving you guys scripture to back it. Because we know God honor his word because God put his word above his name, right? Him and his word is one, right? Then you can also pray something like Romans 8, 14. I decree that I'm a true child of God because I let God's spirit lead me, Right? Or whatever the situation is for you, whether it's spiritually, whether it's financially, whether it's in your mind, like your soul, your heart, your spirit, your body, you know, whether it's education or business in your family, whatever it is, a legal matter, a business, job, career, education, you know, your husband, your spouse, your kids, what, whatever area you can take the word of God that applies to you and you hold on to that word. The word will do the word and God will perform his word. Okay, so now I'm just going to continue reading, you guys. So Psalms 3.3, getting back to Jesus is your protector. Psalms 3.3, but Lord, you are my shield, my wonderful God who gives me courage. And you know, you could speak the word over yourself, but you could also speak it over areas of your life. You can apply certain words to certain situations or over certain family members or your children or, you know, different things like that. You let the word do the work. Second Chronicles 16, verse 9, clause A says, The Lord searches all the earth for people who have given themselves completely to him. I want to read Psalms 3-3 again for somebody. But Lord, you are my shield, my wonderful God who gives me courage. 
Deuteronomy 130. That was Psalms 3 3. Deuteronomy 130 says, The Lord your God will go ahead of you and fight for you as he did in Egypt. You saw him do it. That's Deuteronomy 130. Second Thessalonians 3 3. But the Lord is faithful and will give you strength and will protect you from the evil one. Second Thessalonians 3 3. Exodus 23 22 says if you listen carefully to all he says and do everything that i tell you i will be an enemy to your enemies i will fight all who fight against you that's exodus 23 22 and for you following along in the book we're on page 44 if you're not it's okay you can just listen or take notes or just listen whatever works best for you so guys page 44 first samuel 2 9 he protects those who are loyal to him but evil people will be silenced in darkness Power is not the key to success. 1 Samuel 2 9. Psalm 61 3. You have been my protection like a strong tower against my enemies. Zephaniah 3 17. This is also one of my favorite ones. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty one will save you. He will rejoice over you. You will rest in his love. He will sing and be joyful about you. Zephaniah 3 17. 1 Peter 3 12 through 13. The Lord sees the good people. And listens to their prayers but the Lord is against those who do evil if you are trying hard to do good no one can really hurt you first Peter 3 12 through 13 Deuteronomy 33 27 the everlasting God is your place of safety and his arms will hold you up forever he will force your enemy out ahead of you saying destroy the enemy Deuteronomy 33 27 and guys if you have to pause you can but for sake of time you know I'm going to just keep on reading, but if you want to pause, you can, you know. So Psalms 91, 7. At your side, 1,000 people may die or even 10,000 right beside you, but you will not be hurt. Amen. Psalms 91, that's been one of our protection prayers and blessing prayers for so many years, guys. And may we continue to cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus in the word of God and the full armor of God. Amen, guys. Every day. Isaiah 59, 19. Then people from the west will fear the Lord, and people from the east will fear his glory. The Lord will come quickly like a fast-flowing river driven by the breath of the Lord. Isaiah 59, 19. Glory to God. So now, guys, we're going to talk about Jesus is your security. Jesus is your security. This is pages 46 through 49. So Jesus is your security. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In God's great mercy, he has caused us to be born again into a living hope because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now we hope for the blessings God has for his children. These blessings, which cannot be destroyed or be spoiled or lose their beauty, are kept in heaven for you. God's power protects you through your faith until salvation is shown to you at the end end of time that's first peter 1 3 through 5 again john 10 27 through 30 says my sheep listen to my voice i know them and they follow me i give them eternal life and they will never die and no one can steal them out of my hand my father gave my sheep to me he is greater than all and no person can steal my sheep out of my father's hand the father and i are one Romans 8, 35 and also verses 38 through 39 says, Can anything separate us from the love Christ has for us? Can troubles or problems or sufferings or hunger or nakedness or danger or violent death? Yes, I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor ruling spirits, nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us, nothing below us, nor anything else in the whole world will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord okay Philippians 1 6 says God began doing the good work in you and I'm sure he will continue it until it is finished when Jesus Christ comes again and that's a that's a word for somebody I know uh, different people are listening and many of you are um looking at different scriptures and encouraged by them, but that's a word for somebody too that Philippians 1 6 God who began the good work in you He's going to perform it. He's going to finish and complete his work in you until Jesus Christ return. You got to know that, right? God's not done with you yet. He's not done. The process and the promise and the purpose and all of that 
It's not in vain. He have a reason for it, and it's going to be rewarded, and it's not in vain. Okay? 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3. But the Lord is faithful and will give you strength and will protect you from the evil one. Right? We read that in one of the other ones. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3. Amen. John 6.37 The Father gives me my people. Every one of them will come to me and I will always accept them. John 6.37 Jude verses 24-25 Says God is strong and can help you not to fall. He can bring you before his glory without any wronging you and can give you great joy. He is the only God, the one who saves us. To him, <clears throat> excuse me guys, to him be glory, greatness, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord for all time, past, now, and forever. Amen. That's Jude 24 through 25. Isaiah 40, 26. Look up to the skies. Who created all these stars? He leads out the army of heaven one by one and calls all the stars by name. Because he is strong and powerful, not one of them is missing. Isaiah 40, 26. And the Lord is saying this for someone also. God can take care of the stars. He know them all by name. You much more valuable than a star. He know how to love and take care of you. You know, if that is for you, I encourage you to check out the videos for encouragement. But also, I encourage you to read Matthew chapter 6. Especially hone in on verses like 24 through 33 or like 26, 27 through 33. But Matthew 6 around there will be an encouragement for you. So, we're on page 48, guys. Psalms 23 verse 6. Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. John 6:27. Don't work for the food that spoils. Work for the food that stays good always and gives eternal life. The Son of Man will give you this food because on him God the Father has put his power. That's John 6:27. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22. He put his mark on us to show that we are his and he put his spirit in our hearts to be a guarantee for all he has promised. In 2 Corinthians 1 22. Ephesians 1 13 through 14. So it is with you. When you heard the true teaching, the good news about your salvation, you believed in Christ. And in Christ, God put a special mark of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit that he had promised. That Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we will receive what God promised for his people. Until God gives full freedom to those who are his to bring praise to God's glory. That's Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. Ephesians 4, 30 says, And do not make the Holy Spirit sad, or like, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is God's proof that you belong to him. God gave you the Spirit to show that God will make you free when the final day comes. Ephesians 4, 30. At page 49, um, this one is a little lengthy, but it's Hebrews 6, 11 through 12, and also 18 through 20. It says, we want each of you to go on with the same hard work all your lives so you will surely get what you hope for. We do not want you to become lazy. Be like those who through faith and patience will receive what God has promised. These two things cannot change. God cannot lie when he makes a promise, and he cannot lie when he makes an oath. These things encourage us who came to God for safety. They give us strength to hold on to the hope we have been given. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, sure and strong. It enters behind the curtain in the most holy place in heaven, where Jesus has gone ahead of us and for us. He has become the high priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek. So that's Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 through 12, and also verses 18 through 20. So, guys, we're on page 50. I'm going to pause for a couple seconds. Give you guys, if you want to take notes or pause or reflect on what God is saying to you personally, you know, what's coming to you being downloaded, I'll, you know, take a moment to just pause. And, guys, this book was written in 1996 by Word Incorporated. I think I showed it to you guys in the beginning videos last week. But I'm not sure if I said it was 1996. Okay, so let's stay on for a few more minutes, guys. We're going to talk about Jesus is your answer. 
and this is pages 50 through 52. Let me get some water really quick. Okay, Jesus is your answer. This is 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. It says, and God can give you more blessings than you need. Then you will always have plenty of everything, enough to give to every good work. A 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Philippians 4, 19 says, My God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need. That's Philippians 4, 19. Mark eleven twenty four. So I tell you to believe that you have received the things you asked for in prayer and God will give them to you. Mark eleven twenty four. Second 2 Corinthians 3, verse 5. We are not saying that we can do this work ourselves. It is God who makes us able to do all that we do. Amen. Philippians 4, verses 12 through 13. I know how to live when I'm poor, and I know how to live when I have plenty. I have learned the secret of being happy at any time and everything that happens. When I have enough to eat, and when I go hungry. When I have more than I need, and when I do not have enough. I can do all things through Christ because he gives me strength. That is Philippians chapter 4 verses 12 through 13. Ephesians 1 19 through 20 says, And you will know that God's power is very great for us who believe. That power is the same as the great strength God used to raise Christ from the dead and put him at his right side in the heavenly world. That's Ephesians 1 19 through 20. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 says, But he said to me, my grace is enough for you or sufficient for you, right? When you are weak, my power is made perfect in you. So I am very happy to brag about my weaknesses. Then Christ's power can live in me. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Romans eight thirty seven. But in all these things, we have full victory through God who showed his love for us. Ephesians 1, 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, God has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. That's Ephesians 1, 3. John 15, verse 7. If you remain in me and follow my teachings, you can ask anything you want and it will be given to you. That's John 15, verse 7. John 14, 13. And if you ask for anything in my name, I will do it for you so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. That's John 14, 13. John 16, 23 through 24. Says, in that day, you will not ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy will be the fullest possible joy. That's John 16, 23 through 24. And 52, what well, Jesus is your answer. Matthew, one well, page 52. Matthew 21, 22 says, if you believe, you will get anything you ask for in prayer. I'm sorry, guys. All these calls and notifications. I'm going to keep um, doing this Bible study. This comes first. Matthew 21, 22 says, if you believe, you will get anything you ask for in prayer. Romans 8, 31 through 32 says, so what should we say about this? If God is with us, no one can defeat us. Or as some people like to say, if God before us, who can be against us, right? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up. I'm sorry, but gave him for us all. So with Jesus, God will surely give us all things. That's Romans 8, 31 through 32. Second Peter 1, 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 4 says Jesus has the power of God by which he has given us everything we need to live and to serve God. We have these things because we know him. Jesus called us by his glory and goodness. Through these he gave us the very great and precious promises. With these gifts you can share in being like God and the world will not ruin you with this evil desire. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4. And we're going to close with this last scripture verse on page 52, Psalms 103, 2 through 4. My whole being, praise the Lord, and do not forget all his kindness. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He saves my life from the grave and loads me with love and mercy. That's Psalms 103, verses 2 through 4. So guys, today um, we read from pages 19 to 52. Um, I'm leaving below in the description box what we covered. 
but we talked about um, today, Jesus is your peace, forgiveness, righteousness, deliverer, fellowship, example, friend, brother, protector, security, answer. And then next week on Monday, Lord's will, we're going to talk about Jesus is your satisfaction in everything. And then we're going to move into what to do when you feel. So we're going to talk about what to do like when you feel um, next week, like discouraged, worried, lonely, depressed, dissatisfied, guilty, confused, tempted, angry, rebellious, rejected. We're going to move also into um, over the next coming weeks, what to do when you are, what to do when the Bible is your, what the Bible has to say about faith, love, eternal life, death, praise, serving God, things like that. Truth from the Bible about forgiving others, Christian fellowship, what you can do to make better use of your time and other things in God's plan of salvation. Um, you can check out our other videos going over the contents and everything and what you guys can look forward to with this book. If you have it, I encourage you to read it. If you don't, it's okay. We're going to be reading it together. Amen, you guys. So I love you guys. Um, I hope that you guys have a great Friday and a great blessed weekend. My son says he loves you too, guys. I hope that you guys have a great, um, you know, remainder of this evening. I am uploading this video Um like half like a little bit early instead of like midnight or 11 o'clock it's going to be too much to upload and edit so i'm uploading it a little bit before but it's for friday through the weekend right because the um the weekly devotion was posted for this a few days ago but thank you guys so much for tuning in blessings to you guys peace to you guys and i'll see you guys back in the next video lord's will y'all be safe and god bless